You find me in Oxford, one of the most beautiful cities in England, and home to one of our oldest universities. It's a place that oozes learning and culture, the epitome in the mind of the 19th century Brit of what it meant to be civilized. And I want you to picture a scene from 1873. A young man called Cecil Rhodes had come up here to study as an undergraduate. Not some fresh-faced student straight out of school, but already at 21, a man of the world. He'd left home at 17, he'd gone to South Africa, he'd got rich buying up holdings in diamond mines. And now here he was in Oxford, attending lectures given by professors who loved with a passion the whole idea of the British Empire. Oxford back then was a hotbed of what's now called imperialism. And the young Cecil Rhodes, that's him down there on the facade of Oriel College, he lapped up these ideas and he wrote what he called his Confession of Faith. I contend, he said, that we are the first race in the world and the more of the world that we inhabit, the better it will be for the world. I shall work for the furtherance of the British Empire to bring the whole uncivilized world under British control. Now, seriously, this is scary stuff, all right? This is real master race stuff. And what makes it all the more frightening is that Cecil Rhodes wasn't all talk and no trousers. He was a real man of action. He dreamt of a world under British control, and he left Oxford determined to play his part, making that dream a reality. Rhodes returned to Africa. At that stage, still an unknown continent to most Europeans, barely explored. The British and Dutch had settled the south, and in what's now Botswana, diamond mines flourished. It was here Rhodes increased his wealth, until within a few years he controlled nine-tenths of the world's diamond resources. But further north, beyond the Limpopo in what's now Zimbabwe, Rhodes had heard tell of gold fields. And this was what spurred him on his great imperialist adventure. He mounted an expedition into Matabele land. He tricked the Matabele with promises of friendship. When they realized they'd been duped, he turned on them with Maxim guns, the world's first machine guns. 1,500 Matabele warriors died in one afternoon. And what did Cecil Rhodes call the land he'd conquered? Rhodesia. He named it after himself. I'm in Rhodes House in Oxford, built by money, left the university by Cecil Rhodes. And I've got here two maps that show the consequences of this kind of rampant imperialism in the late 19th century. Imperialism, frankly, gone mad. This is the first. This is Africa in about 1860. The British and the Dutch are down here. Apart from that, there's not much European involvement, bar a few coastal trading ports. But you move on to about 1910, after 50 years of Maxim guns and the exploitation of mineral rights, and now we find the entire continent carved up between different European powers. Germany, France, Belgium, Portugal, and all the areas in pink, Nigeria, and this vast swathe from South Africa all the way up to the Sudan. This was ours. What justified this land grab was our belief, as Rhodes put it, that the more of the world we inhabited, the better it was for the world. And it's true, we came armed not just with guns, but with all the fruits of our civilization. We built railroads, we provided a global marketplace for local goods. Best of all, we introduced traditions of government, of law, that we consider decent and fair. And for three generations, we governed half of Africa. And yet, decency, fairness, it's all in the eyes of the beholder. Fighting spears with Maxim guns, that's hardly fair. Taking land that wasn't ours, hardly decent. And therein lies the contradiction that underscored our empire and eventually destroyed it. <laughs> 